Welcome back. Well, we're going to go ahead and keep talking a little bit about some college football and the tour of our three teams here on the shore continues. I don't think there's any bias here, but Trey went out to catch up with the program he knows a thing or two about. Thanks, guys. I was able to stop by a familiar place this afternoon, a great place for undergraduate and graduate degrees. If anybody's looking, my home on College Avenue last year was one of the more memorable seasons in program history for SU with an 84 point victory at home, an exciting homecoming win over a ranked opponent. And who can forget Isaiah Taylor's 51 yard one handed catch on fourth and 15 to keep title hopes alive. With all that in the rear view now, Salisbury looking to create even more magic in 2016. To some, 2015 would be categorized as a successful season for the Salisbury University football team. After all, the Gauls beat rival Wesley for the first time in 11 years and earned a co-championship their first year competing in the New Jersey Athletic Conference. But even after accomplishing so much, a stinging playoff exit is all that is on the mind of some players this camp. What happened last year is not good enough because obviously we lost in the first round to a team that we all thought we should have beat. There lies the motivation of the 2016 Gauls, a team already with high expectations after being tabbed as the number one team in the conference by the coaches. Honestly, that doesn't mean anything to us. Our back's against the wall, so we know we have to uh, come out ready. Whenever you're in a position where you're number one in one of the best conferences in the country, then you got to get to work. You know, So that's another reason why it doesn't phase our guys is because we are expecting to do well. Head coach Sherman Wood is back for his 18th season at the helm, and the program's all-time winning his coach does not seem to be slowing down, displaying the same enthusiasm as when he laced up his cleats as a goal in the 1980s. I, I get it from the kids. The kids, I tell you, they keep me going. Uh, that's obviously important to make sure that I stay alert, uh, make sure I'm on top of my game. You know, I always talk to them about being on top of their game, so I want to make sure I'm in, in the same, same shape and uh, doing the same thing that they can do. One strong spot for the squad is their offense. Quarterback Ryan Jones and running back Aaron Moore return after carrying Salisbury to 464 yards per game and averaging just over 42 points per contest a year ago. One last neat wrinkle is the presence of locals on the team. With as many as 20 players every year from the Delmarva Peninsula, the Seagulls are doing it with homegrown talent. Starting with local product, senior David Handy. I think about Isaac Johnson. And then you take a kid like a Jock Simon. My number one goal was to make sure we recruit locally, try to bring in as many local talent as possible. And I really believe that Salisbury football helps the community by recruiting local kids. I'm happy, I'm, I'm pleased, we got a new stadium, we got a lot of things going on, but at the same time, we still have to work. And work they will do. The Seagulls begin their season on Saturday, September 3rd, when they take on Albright under the lights in the first game at the new Seagull Stadium. Now, if you remember, Albright shot the goals coming from 20 points down to hand Salisbury the opening weekend loss. This year, SU will be looking to return the favor. All right, keeping the college theme going, we've got one more team to preview. We're taking things back up to Dover, where the Delaware State Hornets are vowing this year will be better. Stick around to find out why. My name is Gustavo Enriquez. I'm a midfielder at Pokemon High School, and you're watching the Marvel Sports Insider. 